This video is a part of a series on how to develop custom embedded coder target for a hardware platform based on ARM Cortex-A processor. In this tutorial, we will register a new ARM Cortex-A based target in the Simulink environment. By the end of this tutorial, your custom target will appear in the hardware board drop-down menu on the hardware implementation pane um, in Simulink. We are using the ARM Cortex-A reference target and we'll use this along with the target SDK to build an embedded coder target for a hardware board, in this case, Begabone Black. We are assuming that you watched the introduction or overview video and have a working setup with a Begabone Black. Now we can get started with registration of the target. Let's do a couple of quick checks to verify that we are ready to go. First, let's make sure that the ARM Cortex-A support package is installed correctly. In the documentation, you should see an entry under Installed Support Package for the ARM Cortex-A processor support package. So we have that installed. That looks great. And then let's make sure the Begabone Black is connected to your computer that you're using for target development. So we are ready to go. At a high level, there are three simple steps. First, we create a framework for the target, then we specify the hardware board and related information, and we finally test the setup. So to create a framework, we will use the create target function along with the name of the target that you've chosen, in this case, my ARM Cortex-A board target, and then we specify the reference target, ARM Cortex-A, and the folder, root folder for the target. So let's execute this command to create the target framework. Now that the framework is created, let's save it and test the framework part. Just for fun, if we look at the workspace, you can see that the TGT or target object has been created in the workspace. Let's take a quick look at the object itself. As you can see, the properties of the object correspond to various features of the target, such as operating systems, profilers, different modes, including processor in the loop and external mode, and so on and so forth. Now, the next step is to specify the hardware board. For this, we use the create hardware function with a name for the specific hardware board that we are working with. So in this case, we are going to use the my Begabone black as the name to specify the hardware board. Let's um, execute this command. Then we set the different properties of um, this hardware board. For example, ARM Cortex A8 is the device ID that corresponds to Begabone Black. And then we map the hardware to the target. Let's take a look at the target once again. As you can see, the hardware board is now mapped to the target. By the way, whatever name you see here, for example, my Begabone Black is the name that will appear in the option in the drop down menu on the hardware implementation pane. Now, as the final step in this tutorial, let's add the IO interface and change the default IP address to the correct one here and save the target. So I'm going to execute this set of commands. And the final step is to test the setup. And looks like we have set, up, set this up correctly. So this completes the three steps in the tutorial. Let's see if this particular entry appears in the Simulink menu. Let's go to the configuration parameters in this Simulink model, specifically on the hardware implementation pane, and look at the hardware board dropdown. And here it is, my Begabone Black is a new entry that has appeared here based on the target framework that we created. 